Here to respond is one half of the Libertarian Party ticket, Gar uh, Bill Weld, Gary Johnson's running mate, uh, former governor of Massachusetts. Governor Weld, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Jake. Pleasure. So you've said a lot of nice things about Hillary Clinton and li lately, and you've made it clear that you consider Donald Trump a clear and present danger to the nation. I know you want the Libertarian Party to get that 5% it needs in order to go forward and continue to be a thriving American political party. But I have to say, sometimes it sounds like you want to endorse Clinton. Is that, am I reading you wrong? Well, you're correct, Jake, that I do want the Libertarian Party to get over 5% uh, in, in the vote, because that would give the Libertarian Party a permanent seat at the table in our ongoing national political dialogue. And I do think one of the issues in this campaign has been, do you like the uh, two-party monopoly, the R Party and the D Party, in Washington, D.C.? We don't like that monopoly. That's the monopoly that kept us out of the debates and, you know, deprived us of the chance to, uh, to run the table. Having said all of that, uh, I do see a big difference between the two other candidates, Mr. Trump and Mrs. Clinton. I do think that Mr. Trump, with all deference, is totally unfit uh, to be president of the United States. I don't think he has the stability to hold up under the constant pressure and criticism that any president is going to face every day uh, that he or she is in office. Uh, I, I don't think he has the temperament to... Um, deal with all the many, many stakeholders at home and abroad that any president is going to have to do it. And, you know, I think it's a measure of how much our politics has sunk this year that when I say anything even faintly civil about uh, Mrs. Clinton, you know, there are shrieks of uh, outrage. How could he say that? Doesn't he realize that she's the enemy because she's on another ticket? Well, she's not the enemy. She's a perfectly reputable, professional, responsible candidate for president of the United States and deserves to be treated as such. I, it's just an odd position you're in, I guess, because you're on one of the tickets and yet you're saying something nice and like you, you're reality based. You know that Gary Johnson is not going to be the next president of the United States. You're not going to be the next vice president of the United States. And in, in some ways, it might seem to, to some critics that you're trying to have it both ways, not endorsing Clinton, but you want no responsibility if, if you and Governor Johnson tip the election in any way to Donald Trump. Am I being unfair? Well, I, 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 am, I am on the ticket, and tens of thousands of people in the libertarian ranks have worked very hard to try to get us to this point, uh, which is a high point to date uh, for the Libertarian Party. You never know where a vote is coming from. My belief is that the Libertarian Party uh, pulls substantially more from Mr. Trump uh, than from Mrs. Clinton. I, I'm well aware there was an earlier uh, media boomlet for the idea that, oh, no, all our voters were millennials and we were pulling millennials from Mrs. Clinton. That's, that's not my understanding of what the detailed uh, polling shows. But, uh, you know, we've got a perfect right to try to uh, draw our vote just as everyone else does. Uh, but I have made uh, plain uh, my view uh, of the two candidates. And, and frankly, I think... Uh, you know, Mrs. Clinton uh, recently has uh, been receiving a pretty raw deal from people trying to fan the flames that there's some huge uh, FBI uh, new investigation of her email server. And, you know, there are obviously Republican members of Congress uh, who are in that hunt. It does appear that there may be uh, some disgruntled uh, FBI agents who, who appear to think that somehow they've been cheated of their prey. Uh, that's not how the system is supposed to work. And, and I think Jim Comey is a real good guy, real good reputation in the Justice Department uh, for a long time. But I do think he made a mistake sending that uh, letter to Congress, which is essentially the equivalent of a press release, uh, not quite saying we're reopening the investigation because that was not done, but certainly fanning the flames and jumping into the middle of a presidential uh, election with 10 or 11 days to go. That's not what the FBI is supposed to be all about. And it was a just... A, a 180 degree violation of long standing uh, practice and principles of the Justice Department. Well, Governor, are you saying that you think that the FBI director should step down or should resign? No, 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 I'm not saying that. And, uh, you know, I think one thing that's happened, everyone is so anxious because this is such a, uh, a watershed election. It's a conscience uh, election. Everyone's going to remember who they voted for this year. I think the stakes are, are so high because the the, the standing of the of the two uh, major candidates is so so disparate. It'll be like, you know, everyone remembers where they were when they heard about 9-11. Everyone who is old enough remembers where they were when President Kennedy was shot. I think people are going to look back uh, on this uh, election and uh, really reflect on the vote that they took. And I, I think it's a year when people have to think for themselves and cast a, cast a vote of conscience.
Let me ask you about the state of New Hampshire. You're from neighboring uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Take a look at this poll from WBUR TV. It shows Trump 40 percent, Clinton 39 percent, Johnson Weld 10 percent. So you are having an impact on who might win that key battleground state in New Hampshire and those four crucial electoral votes. Are you comfortable with the fact that support for you might tip New Hampshire and thus the presidency to one of the candidates? And since you are not, not comfortable with Donald Trump, what if it is tipping it towards Donald Trump? Well, that's in a way conjectural. Uh, but the answer is, yeah, I am comfortable with us uh, uh, pursuing uh, the best we can get as a libertarian ticket. You know, I remind uh, you and the audience that uh, we are fiscally responsible and socially inclusive. We think that's the best combination of positions, and it's one reason why I do think it's important uh, to have the libertarians have a seat at that table in Washington. It's not like we would be a threat to the stability of the republic. We don't have a parliamentary system. We have a, uh, a fixed-term system in the United States, so you're not going to have an inability because of extra parties uh, to get uh, to a decision on, on the presidency. But I think, we, I think the Republican Party has a lot to learn from us about being socially inclusive. I think the Democratic Party has a lot to learn from us about being fiscally responsible and, and uh, balancing the budget, which we have pledged to do in our first uh, 100 days. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it'd be a long, cool drink of water for Washington to have us there, so I don't feel at all apologetic about us trying to get All right. There. Governor Weld, good luck on Tuesday. Thank you so much, sir.